Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Appreciate you in the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. This is episode 124. Y'all, I'm, my fault. I'm sorry. We had to reboot. <laughs> um, this is episode 124 of the podcast. Uh, this is Hype. I am Hype. At I am Hype on Instagram and Twitter. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Uh, reoccurring guest, special guest in the building. He's here for the yeah. launch of the podcast. Reintroduce yourself. New listeners every day, man. It's the one and only Mr. Flash and only sipping with Sammy, Sam Malone, Barstool, Rug. If you ain't sipping with Sammy, you ain't sipping right. Please get your fucking life together. We in here, man. Copy that. Shouts out to my man Sam. If you're watching the video, you see over his shoulder is Sai. Those were the guests for the last How to Hustle live show. You know what I'm saying? We will mm-hmm. be having another one of those coming soon. We are working on the venue. Shouts out to the barn. Once again, folks, we need y'all to go to the barn Instagram and hit that link in that bio and please donate to that GoFundMe to support the staff and all of that situation. They supported us, so let's support them. All right. Now, we shout are... out to the barn. Shout out to South. And I got to shout out my sponsor, Rich Jewels. Shout out to Rich Jewels, man. Young black woman with her own jewelry cu- company. She make custom male, female. Get with her. So this is what we're going to do. Dip the shoulder over a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Give her a little love. Copy that. Boom. For all those watching on the E-Block Radio Network every Monday at 2 o'clock, you know what I'm saying? You can see that right now. All right. <laughs> Now, we switched the show all the way up, y'all, so we still going to hit y'all with the main topic, but then we got a couple different segments we're going to break down, sponsored segments and all of that. Sponsorships are also available, you know what I'm saying, if you want to get in here and, you know what I'm saying, you want to be advertising on the How to Hustle podcast with him or on the Sipping with Sammy podcast, you yeah. know what I'm saying, we can make all of that happen. Now, Sam, we've been doing mm-hmm. this long enough that uh, we've caught all of the different waves of this. Let <laughs> let fa- How long have you been doing this? Let the audience know that. Uh, I'm... About five and a half years on my podcast, I think. I think we had 236 or something like that. All right. I am at year six. I'll be year seven next year. Um, I got 124 on how to hustle. Mm-hmm. I had 100 and I don't know what on OLF. I think it was three years mm-hmm. of OLF. So don't get me to lying mm-hmm. on the number. Um, <laughs> So I've lost count. But We've been through all of the waves of this situation. So we was doing this drawing when it wasn't cool. When people was like, what's a podcast? And you had to explain, like, it's like a radio show, but not a radio show. You know Dude, they didn't want to call their shit podcast. They were starting podcasts and they didn't want to call it a podcast. It was crazy. That's what I'm saying. So we've been through the we've been through the what's that to it's the complete wave for the whole underground to now every artist, celebrity in the world got a podcast. So this is the topic for this week. Sam, what's next for mm-hmm. podcasting? Huh? What's next for podcasting? You're the guy to bring this one to because paid talent and a professional for, like yourself, you know what I'm saying? This is what we need to know. What's next? Next for next for podcasting is more corporate involvement um, on a different level. Like the same way that um, social media and Cash App are using their platforms as labels, labels are going to have to use these platforms, these podcast platforms more often than um, their regular routes of media and um, rollout and, and promo. So you already see it happening a little bit. You see certain platforms when people got something going on, they're part of their rollout. If they go to Hot 97 and Breakfast Club, they also go to Drink Champs and 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 Million Dollars Worth of Game and mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And Math Hoffa joint, um, my expert opinion, all in the same route. So it's like that's 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 what's going on right now. But I think that that's only gonna balloon because um payola's illegal in radio. Break that down for the audience. Meaning, like, this is a loophole right now that they really could um kind of juice and use the influence from, and probably even cut a couple checks without being um getting in trouble for it right now. So when I when I think about this one, is what's next for the situation? I think it's like the TikTokification of it. You know what I'm saying? So it's going to be shorter for them. It's going to be shorter, not even that it's a shorter form, it'll just be so much of just, you're going to have to break down an episode. Your editing game is going to have to be on a bean because that way. Oh, yeah, we there now. Can, I got to do that you, now. Yeah. You can break down a whole episode, but turn that into 40 different clips. Yep. And now you never know, like, you know how them situations work. You might get 60,000 views on this one or that one. You might get 20 on this one. <laughs> But yeah, the, because people yeah, with the so, TikTok and with the reels, you could just go like viral real quick on the right clip. Hey, bro, I had a joint from I think this was like 
after the second live show. It's like 10,000 people watch this. It's just me leaning on the car. I ain't know why this joint just kept going up, up, up. I'm like, I mean, copy. It's like seven seconds, but it ain't nothing. I ain't doing nothing. I ain't say nothing. I was about to take a picture. I didn't even know they was recording me. <laughs> the video with the kids dancing in front of my sign that they put all the squeaky arm noises over went viral like five different times already. That's what I'm saying. So it, it wound up on Nicki Minaj story one day. I was like, huh? That's why I said I think it's the uh it's the this is why I went to the podcast drive through when I started How to Hustle is because I know people with short attention span. The attention spans have gotten shorter since three years ago when I started this. Like no, which, that's is, the fact. which is like real bad because like I said, you think pretty much now you don't even really have to give them a whole show, I don't think. I think you'll be able to be able to do this in a year or two and just spurts. You could really probably talk to somebody for five minutes and turn it into forty different clips and you'll never know that there wasn't a whole other suit. Because yeah, depending on depending on your ultimate goal, because there's still an audience for long form. There's just a bigger audience for short form. So you kind of got to cover all your bases a little bit. Well, you because definitely got multifaceted. If, 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 this... if Joe putting out three hour episodes, we ain't there yet. See, all right. So you know where I came from. We was doing two hours live on the radio, phone calls, mm -hmm. ad reads, all of that. Love. Me too. But yeah. Niggas are tell you you know this is what this is why you this is why we're having this conversation about this. We've been mm -hmm. through the different phases of this. People will tell you like you know, merchandise right there. Let them see that again. Don't just slyly put that in there. You know what I'm saying? Let them know where those are available at as well. Uh tap in with me, DM man. We'll ship it to you. Copy that. <laughs> um yeah, we've been in this situation where we know we've been doing these live shows and people will tell you, like, yeah, that joint long as shit, but you just watched Jeezy do a four-hour interview. Like, that joint wasn't long as shit. When Drink Champs had whoever up here, you was cool with that joint, so don't give me that. Like, when I first started this situation and we got on the radio, I said, man, we the same as Mike and Mike. They on ESPN and we on WTNU Philly, but them niggas is the competition. Like Exactly, absolutely. Most people don't look at these situations like that, though. So where else you think we're going with this situation? Because like it went from what's that to the underground podcast exploded just with your average everyday guys and girls until the celebrities all hopped on the situation. So where else you think we're going to go with this? I think we're going to get to a point where the separation is going to be based on something different. Like just like you said about the short form, there's going to be a lot of people that adapt to just doing that. You see what I'm saying? Which would be similar to like um Instagram and, and, and Twitter comedians at one point, right? Where all the people that was doing long form was looking at them like, man, they, they 40 seconds, yo. You know what I mean? That's gonna become a whole group in itself of people that 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 um make the most out of that, that like kill that space. Um live streaming is 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 is, is more important now. You know what I mean? So now you got to differentiate through who could get a live crowd and who could get a crowd for something that's premiering and pre-recorded. That's going to be different. I think every I think it's going to be more classes. Like everything's going to be broken up into like how rap is like 18 different genres in one. I think I think it's going to be more identity, but I also think there's going to be a huge drop off of long form creators. Yeah, uh, because you ain't got that, that, that audience ain't going to be there. Once you get into another generation and another generation, it's going to be, these are the short attention span babies starting to have babies. And it's a bigger investment. Yeah, a bigger investment in your time, your creative. People don't understand how hard these situations is. Everybody think, yeah, I can do a podcast just because you and your band always talk about the game and all of that, and that's cool. Y'all talk about being dads and all of that. That gets you through six episodes. Then what you going to do? Yep. Like, it's kind of hard to hit year four and year five, year six, you know what I'm saying? I have people mm -hmm. engaged and want to know what you think and like why you ain't send me the episode or what's going on. Like it's not easy to do this. I mean, if you're good at it and you pay talent like some of us are, then you can make this look like I can do this on a yo-yo. I came from doing this with 10 people to doing it with just me and you now. This is so easy because I had the experience of doing it with 10 people. <laughs> like most people though don't understand that. Um Something that I will give uh, BTG, you know, I'm always about promoting the city, promoting the city and promoting the podcast that are around the city. Shouts out to BTG because I remember they said this years ago that uh, that they thought that the next step would be record labels signing uh, podcasts. I see that becoming a thing. Might not even be just record labels, but it might be just like, all right, Revolt is going to get on and get not just the bigger platform type of guys, like you said, people who got... The, who had the, the comedians who had just the 40 second joints popping, the podcasts who get those clips to be popping, 
who get mm-hmm. those streams, who get those views, who get that reaction. I think mm-hmm. that iHeart, Revolt, and all of those different, they might have a Spotify TV or whatever the hell coming down the pike, an Apple TV, any of those different situations, Peacock, like they'll start to stream some of those things on those platforms. Not saying that they're going to come right on Spotify. No, nah, I mean, I peep, I peep that you are one of the people who's, I said Spotify TV though. Let's yeah, have this yeah, is a yeah, whole yeah, different yeah. thing. I know your joints is on when you click it, you turn your joint sideways and you'll get the whole visual. Yeah, I'm, I'm locked in, you know that. My <laughs> my um, but no, right, I think yeah. you're right. I agree with what you're saying. Um, I think that um, a lot of the big companies, you got complexes and you have the Spotify's and so forth that have tried to like, they tried to dictate the market by grabbing the biggest or the fastest rising podcasters in the beginning. And a lot of that didn't work out. So they're going to just restructure. You go, yeah, you got to restructure. If you come in with some, you come in with some lower tier, you come in with a lower tier, you ain't trying to get TI to come straight on the joint. And now you had to cut him a check for something crazy. But if you get six joints at half the price and now one of them pop, is all you, you worrying about. Cause it's shit, how much money Netflix and Peacock and all these different joints lose every year? Like, they're losing billions right. of dollars, so they're not worrying about a couple hundred thousand, which will change your whole situation or my whole situation, but it's just, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Peanuts, yeah, I don't need a hundred million, but I take it. I don't need it, but copy. If you're going to hand it out, I'll take it with both hands, a couple of duffel bags, and tell my wife to get one of these bags. <laughs> now, we're going to switch this up now. This is getting to know Sam right here. Uh, All right. We're going to know me. Spot- this is Get to Know Sam, sponsored by Custom Hustle. That is at Custom Hustle World on Instagram, Custom Hustle Co. on Twitter. We have custom jerseys, jackets, and yes, sneakers. These are the CH3s available in all colors. These are the threes right here. So we mm-hmm. go up to the fours, the ones, twos, threes, and fours. Those are four different types of sneaker. Not one sneaker, just with a little twist on them. Blah. There's four different types of sneakers. <laughs> um, but we design, you customize all your situations. Jerseys, jackets, like I said, we got the kids stuff, all of that, and we're working on some more stuff. We don't make announcements until stuff is official. But That's um, so heavy. So heavy. Now, Sam, this is my man. Like I told y'all, uh, my man, he was featured on the last How to Hustle Live show. So we're going to do this. I'm going to throw out this one right here. This is going to be a year I'm throwing out to you. You tell me how old were you and what's the first thing that you think of? 1996. 96, I was 14 and basketball and girls and hip hop was everything. All I cared about, bro. Basketball, girls, and music was all I cared about at 14 years old. And um uh adjusting to a um new environment, because I um that's my first year at ENS, but like really figuring out that like you know how you the man in middle school, like seventh, eighth grade, you run the school. And they you go kill you because you got reached. <laughs> you go ninth grade, you gotta start over. But by like the end of the first quarter, we was with all of the seniors and and Lynn Greer and you know we was lit. So it was like, oh, I could do this anywhere. So I, I got a lot of confidence at fourteen. Shouts out to Lynn. Somebody asked me, could I do a Lynn uh, jersey? Told him, yeah, we could do anything. <laughs> Shout out to Lynn, man. Lynn was good folks. Lynn, John, Kelly, they was good folks, man. Nineteen ninety six. All I could think about is that's Tupac. <laughs> That's all funny. I think about 96 is Tupac. I tell my wife this all the time. Like, if I be watching something old and they'd be like, oh, this was before Tupac died. Or this was after Tupac. <laughs> like, I always, I don't know why. Tupac was my guy. But 96, that's exactly where my head go. That's a trauma <laughs> you need to work through. <laughs> that's my man, bro. I was the nigga with the Tupac movie. I was the old boy in the back singing all the songs. Uh, all right. <laughs> Riverside, motherfucker. <laughs> Since you brought this up into your answer, you said uh, the music was everything back for you in those days. R&B or rap? Rap. I knew a lot of R&B, but I wasn't purchasing R&B. No, I wasn't not talking, no R&B. hold up. My bad, we kind of mixed this up. I didn't mean for 96. I mean just in general. Oh, in general? Yeah, in general now. I'm majority hip-hop and rap. Um, I love R&B. Um, kind of equally throughout my whole life. It's always had a place, but it never was in the forefront. Like, I don't really get in my car and ride to R&B. Back in the day, when I used to do stuff I wasn't supposed to do, like drink and then hop in the car and try to make it home, I used to put on Flowetry. But that would be, like, the only time you would hear R&B in my car. That's Because I'm not a gangster. All the gangsters I know listen to slow songs all day. I'm not a gangster. That's the late night floating, though, like, 
at that point, you what you're talking about is I'm floating on my way home. I might be trying to line something up. Yeah, you got to have that R&B vibe going. You can't have Styles P telling you shoot niggas, fuck niggas, what niggas. That's not going to work. You just go get in trouble on your way home. That's what I'm saying. You're going, you going, yeah, you're going to take yourself somewhere that you're not supposed to be trying. That's you're not trying to get. You're trying to get her, you know what I'm saying, back to the crib so she can that sit part. the same. That part. <laughs> you, you, you get this night cat. Exactly. Now, uh, what's your favorite song? My favorite song? Yes. Damn, bro, that's not fair. Um, <laughs> oh, Sippin'. Hey, ta- Sippin' is your favorite song? Only reason I would say Sippin' is because at, at this point, it's like the whole, like I built the whole brand off of that shit. Like, it, it wasn't like the brand was designed and, and thought of before the song, but the song kind of tied everything together. He carried it, you know what I mean. So for me personally, that um, cause like I love uh, most songs equally. I look at songs like, oh, that was damn near perfect. Oh, that's a ninety-two. That's about an eighty-seven. Like I'm weird with music, bro. So you go straight into two K on the situation, <laughs> cause I cause I make music. So like no, sometimes it'd be like, damn, if it was only like this, that would have been a ninety. You know what I'm saying? If they would have just right there. So what you talking about is the same thing that I do with this. When I listen to people's podcasts and they ask, or somebody asks you what you think, or they don't even ask you, you just listening, and you just know from doing it. Oh no, you should probably tell me, man, just relax and let you get your point off. Or come on, you gotta speak up a little fast. You gotta talk a little faster. You gotta speak up. You can't have these dead spots. You hear all of that type of stuff that you can edit on the fly. This is why I tell people, man. Like again, coming from doing this live on the radio for two hours. There was no edit. We can't stop and say, hey, hold up. You want to say that again? If you mess something up, it's messed up. That's why I don't edit now. Because if it's if it's something there, then you shouldn't have said it. If it's really something that bad, we can just restart and we can, you know what I'm saying? But Bro, we're not editing speak, certain situations out. I speak very well for the most part. I've had radio episodes where I was stuttering for no reason for like the first 15 minutes. Just trying to say the regular stuff that I say every week. I just couldn't get it. I was like a brain fart. Like, you know what I mean? No edits, though. I'm going to just get grinded up for the next hour and a half about <laughs> about my little jumble. <laughs> I, got couple, I, got a couple, I got a couple things, and I'm going to put a pen and sipping for you. A couple things here. Um, Somebody told me that when we first started. When me and Borg were sitting there, it was like, y'all like, y'all, tr- I know y'all, and I know this is not how y'all sound when y'all having a conversation. You trying to be too professional. You trying to be too buttoned up. I'm listening to this podcast earlier today, and they doing their first live show, and you can tell these niggas don't not do a live show because they sound like they just sitting right there at the table talking to each other, and the audience just happens to be there. As yeah, somebody, but they're to play. At that point, what did what did why did I buy a ticket? <laughs> I didn't buy a ticket to put my headphones in and listen to this podcast because this is what you're doing to me. Somebody like me, before I did my first live show on my own, I watched people's live shows. I listened to the audio for people's live shows. You got to do that homework so that you know, okay, this is the do and this is a don't. This is what I want to have. This is what I don't want to have. I like that they did this. I didn't like that. You got to pick and choose and you got to do the work. Again, this is why I said in the beginning of this, this stuff ain't easy. And we've been through stages of this thing. Like, where you got to grow and evolve with the business or guess what? Your Instagram page has been sitting here with 5,000 followers since 2021 and you have no posts because you burnt out and you couldn't adjust with the times. Um, Now, like I said, I put a pen and sip in now. The reason I love that you said this, that was your answer is because that is the brand and that's the marketing and that's the whole situation tied in the boat. And that's what you have to do with this stuff. This stuff is all about continuously putting it in front of your face, but giving you a different spin with it. That's why I, I came, came in with merch. I came in with merch. Glasses, shot I was leaving shot glasses everywhere. People were just sending me pictures like, I ain't know you know such and such. They got your shot glass. <laughs> you already know. These Jones is at every concert in the city. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Like, the Sam oh, Dan when COVID hit. Oh. All of that. And that was just like a baseline to show people that we were serious. Like, I'm not doing all this for nothing. You know what I'm saying? Because after that, then you got to buy more cameras and upgrade the cameras and find a table that makes sense for my set the way my set is. And come on, man. Like, it's a lot that go into, like, when you really say you want to do this. But first and foremost is knowing that 
like you said, Joe Button is my competition. Yeah. Even though he ain't really got no competition in this space, I want my shit to be look as good and run as smooth as his. Bro, when I sell out Wells Fargo, okay, mm-hmm. <laughs> when we get down there, you know what I'm saying, I might have you open up the situation. I'm not sure how we're going to lay all of that out just yet. We'll work on that. you need, bro. Us. Once we get those tickets moving. But when I sell out Wells Fargo, they're going to say, all right, well, we can get Joe to do this, John. Or we can get Hype to do this, John. We can get the drink champs or we can get whoever. Like, I don't even like throwing niggas' names out there. You're not promoting how to hustle on your situation, so let's not promote you on ours. Um, Something that you also touched was my next question. Because I told you this before. I love your interview style. I love how... Your joint is so, it sounds so clean and so buttoned up, but it's still just you. It's not you trying to sound like I'm going to sit shoulders back uh, and read off the 25 questions that I have for this artist. No, that's not the style that you give, but it sounds like you've prepared, like you know what you're talking about. Like you know who this person (laughs) is that's sitting across from you doing this episode. And I love that. I told you that before personally, but let's get it out there. Let's give those flowers or you can smell them 20 years from now you have to step up and go damn hype did tell me that and let's let's put that back out there because i love the interview style i I, again, I do my homework and i study from everything so i get some things that i go okay sam delivered it like that how do i make that sound like me you know what I'm saying? I, so, um, this, go, go ahead. ahead ask the question who is the who's your dream interview oh Dream interview would be Hove because that's probably the person I know the most about. <laughs> and probably the furthest reach. Um, also, um, I would want to interview somebody like Kev for the city and somebody like um, Corey Holcomb just to see if I could keep up. See, the comedians, you got to be quick on your feet. Everybody can't do a comedian. <laughs> but the, the twist, and that's what I was about to say earlier. Um, my style of in um conversation on camera, because I really try not to interview people because that becomes like um interrogation style sometimes. It gets weird and gets robotic. Mm-hmm. But my style actually comes from literally sitting on bar stools all the time and talking to people I don't know while drinking. You see what I'm saying? Like it's the same thing. Like even on nights I didn't want to be bothered or or whatever have you, I might have been trying to holler at something on the right side and somebody on the left side talking my ear off. I still knew how to catch their major points and engage them and let them be hurt. Tent poles. <laughs> <laughs> somebody, I remember somebody asked a question and bro hit me and was like, yo, what the hell is tent poles you was talking about? I said, my wife is telling me about this girl from this job and that girl. I don't know these people. I don't really <laughs> need to know all the ins and outs of the situation. I need the tent poles. I yep. need to know when she say the girl from the third floor. Oh, you're talking about Keisha. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. Tent poles. That's what you're listening for. Copy. Go ahead. Yeah, but it's just that, like, it's literally, like, another thing that I built confidence on. Like, it started from, like, being young and riding septa and being, like, I could be the, I could be on a bus full of people. And this old white lady will sit right next to me and talk my ear off. This old Spanish man to sit right next to me and just keep ign- engaging me somehow. And people just, I used to hate it because I had more insecurities back then. And I'm like, I just want to chill. Why are people bothering me type shit? But then I realized that that was a gift. And when I got older and wound up on, in bar settings and at happy hours and stuff, and usually when you at happy hour in the, in the right bar, there's older gentlemen and older women there. It's not really like a young hype crowd. You start having conversations with people and appreciating people in a way that you didn't think that they would appreciate you through conversation. So all of that those built are, my confidence to those to are adults. To talk to people. That that is when you are in an adult setting, like you just said. <clears throat> Everybody in here is looking to relax. Everybody in here is looking to catch this vibe. Nobody's in here looking for smoke. <laughs> no, and yo, try this, try also, this, try this fifteen year, twelve year scotch real quick, man. This is what I'm drinking. You know what I mean? That's what they're doing. See, this is what it also is too, because see, this is why me and you. I use all I use everything. Every conversation is currency. Mm-hmm. Every conversation is a is a uh ability for me to sharpen my skills with this or for me to get a topic out of it. Mm-hmm. Like you said, you know, my with my regular work is with everybody from every genre in the world. And you never know who you're gonna run into or what you're gonna run into. 
and I might be in here and have just a five second interaction with this nigga. Oh, that's a topic. <laughs> like it's going to be positive though, but it's going to be positive. It's only it's positive when you come in with positive. If you ain't coming mm-hmm. in again, if you have an you're in an adult situation, you're not coming in looking for no smoke. At this stage in life, we're not looking for smoke. <laughs> we're looking for all things that progress the situation, all things that get the sponsorships to be better, all things that get the brand more promoted, all things that get the things out there that we're trying to do. Because I want to learn in with the, time these days. I want to learn with the intention of teaching. And see, people like so. Somebody told me at like one of the last jobs we did, and he had a podcast. He said it, and I just start laughing. And he like what? And then I just went <laughs> for like twenty minutes, just giving him just game. He was like, "Hey, bro, I ain't even think about half the shit that you just told me." And I said, I ain't even going to hold you. I'm not even doing it because I want you to say nothing about I told you this shit. I said, I remember me and my brother just screaming at each other in the basement. I wish somebody would have told us some shit. Yep. <laughs> so, um, so now if I have the ability to be able to just give you just some some of the basics that you you don't know what you don't know. You can't ask right. the question if you never even had that thought process. Like, you, like but don't you said, be discouraged. You know, Start where you're at and be yourself. Don't be discouraged and don't try to be nobody else. You got to be you. This has to sound like you. You can't go nowhere else and get hype. This is only, I'm only here. I'm only on how to hustle. So this might, this don't sound like nobody. It don't feel like nobody else because they ain't me. They can't be me. <laughs> That's a fact. Now, this is a new joint now. This is the closing segment. This is where you tell us what do we need to know. This is sponsored by H2H Cleaning. And that is H2H Cleaning on Instagram only. My cleaning company. We do roofing, plumbing, flooring, HVAC, cleanups, cleanouts. We're doing power washing. We do remodeling. You name it, we got it. We are hustling everything. Sam, what do we need to know before you go? What we got Simple going with on? Sammy on podcast. Simple with Sammy Podcast drops every Thursday at 7 p.m. We don't miss a week. I probably got five episodes waiting to come out right now. Um, I go live every Monday. I said Thursday at 4 p.m. We go live every Monday at 7 p.m. So that's a live stream. We cur- cover current events. I have guest hosts, co-hosts, and things like that on. Sometimes I even have guests through um that have something coming up current. But um, we have fun. Y'all able to chat with us, give feedback, interact with us through the chat. And um, I can receive super chat, so tap in for that. Um, the merch is available. I have Sam Dana's glasses, shot glasses, cognac glasses, mugs. Um, I put out a few different beers. This is the What You Sipping IPA. I got um damn near Wills. I got a few of them. So tap in with me for that. It's about three, four different flavors of sipping with Sammy Brewing Company IPA. It's a novelty thing, but um, it's actually good flavor and it's a vibe. It's a vibe. People are, are appreciating it. Um, shout out to my sponsor. Rich Jewels, anybody that knows me knows I haven't really worn jewelry since white gold. I probably still had that chain and bracelet at my mom's house. <laughs> but um I got a um I got a I got a jewelry sponsor and she's dope and she makes, like I said earlier, male and female jewelry. She has holiday specials going on right now. Um and she's a vibe also somebody that's dope to talk to. Uh 250 of sipping with Sammy episode will be a live recorded situation we won't live stream it but we will record it live hype will be in the building as usual um i got a couple venues in mind i'm gonna lock them in soon but we're looking at january or february because like i said i'm in the 230s right now so i got a little bit of time um anything i'm missing man just um everybody the keep last up. live show as soon as y'all threw it to the crowd say yo anybody want to get yeah, that would be me i'll go up first <laughs> <laughs> No, but that was so fly when it was all um when we put out the footage and all of that and it was edited. The one thing that I gotta change is um I need an extra camera for the crowd. I didn't like that we didn't have a camera on the crowd and I didn't realize it till we was like deep in. So um that's, that's something that I want that but that's what we talked about being able to live edit these situations when you wa- when you're watching back your own stuff again. This is another one. I don't know why people don't listen to their own stuff and watch their own stuff. You got to watch the game tape to see how do you make it better for the next joint. How you make two fifty better than two hundred. How you make three fifty better than two fifty. You don't know none of that if you don't watch none of that. You ain't studying none of that. And I usually have a crowd camera, but I don't know why I didn't realize that. Oh, this is what happened. Remember the camera that was on the side where people was on giving the shout outs at? Yeah. That was one of our cameras. That was the crowd camera. And I ain't realized it. 
All right, well, this is the end. You tell people the wrong time next time so that when they come in and do the shout outs, then the crowd camera is available and not over here recording niggas on the side. <laughs> I'm sick of telling the dose the wrong time, man. Y'all need to get there on time because y'all going to miss something if I'm having it. And again, I, I let, since you brought that up again, let me apologize to you. Uh, How to Hustle Live show the second one. You came on time, but the guests were not. So uh, again, I apologize for that one, bro. But you know what I'm saying? We'll make that situation up. Sam, bro, you don't got to make up nothing to me. Over. I know it takes something to make something, and I'm there as long as you need me if possible. So go ahead. Copy that, bro. I appreciate you coming on episode 124, the relaunch of the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Appreciate we you having me always. Are out. I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up.